Welcome to the Money Over 50 podcast, brought to you by Dallas Davison and Michael Hogue from Money Over 50 Financial Advisors. This information is general in nature and does not take into account your objectives, financial situation, or needs. Therefore, you should consider whether the information is appropriate for you and your personal circumstances. If you require personal advice, please contact Money Over 50 Financial Advisors. Welcome to the Money Over 50 podcast. It's just myself again, so Ali speaking. And today I'm going to discuss three of the main changes that, is, that have happened with uh, superannuation from 1st of July 23. Um, so first I'll just sort of list, list the things I'm going to discuss. So number one, uh, the, there has been an increase to the amount of superannuation contributions that an employer has to pay. So your compulsory super contributions. Then there uh, has been number two, the super transfer limit has increased. So this is the amount of money in superannuation that can be moved into a tax-free pension account. And then number three, of course, the um, for those that are drawing an income from their pension accounts, the minimum amounts that you can draw have essentially doubled and gone back to the way they were originally. So number one, uh, compulsory super contributions. So as we all know, when you are employed by another employer, essentially what they have to do is they're going to make super guarantee contributions. Now these are contributions that they pay into your superannuation, um, which is a percentage of the salary that you earn. So last financial year, they were paying 10.5% into your superannuation of your wage. And this has increased to 11%. So the rules are each year they want to increase that by half percent up until um, we reach that 12% mark. So from 1st of July 25, those increases will stop. So this is a good thing, uh, meaning that you're getting more money into superannuation, getting that money invested, and that uh, those contributions that are made, they're made as um, before tax as well. So, so you're not um, you're not paying your your tax. And you're not using your net income to get that money in. So, you get a bit more money into superannuation in a low tax environment, having that invested and letting that money work and grow towards uh, building up for your retirement savings. So, uh, of course, we're always going to welcome uh, getting more money into superannuation. I don't think there's any listeners on here that want uh, less in there, so it's a good thing, um, especially, I guess, with the uh, over the past year or so, the um, increase in cost of living and stuff like that. So it's good to have, have that money going in. A lot of money, extra money going into superannuation, sorry, and um, and working towards uh, building for your retirement. So that's the main one. And again, from what we're sort of looking at there is getting up to all well, the government's um, basically increasing that by half a percent each year until we reach a point where there's 12% going into your superannuation from your employer. Now, the second thing is the super transfer limit. So essentially what what's happened is um, transfer balance cap was originally at 1.7 million. So what, what that means is that you can move uh, $1.7 million into your, uh, from superannuation and accumulation phase. So this is just your normal superannuation that um, everyone has. And you can move about 1.7 million into a pension account, so an account-based pension. Why this is good? A um, few reasons. You can you can draw an income from this money, a regular income, and the tax paid on earnings and any income drawings from uh, pension accounts are completely tax-free. So, uh, especially the earnings part, it's a, a I guess a really big one. So, earnings inside superannuation and accumulation phase. Uh, they're taxed at fifteen percent, which is still less than what uh, most people's marginal tax rate is, anyway. So you've got a saving there. But once you move it into that pension account, 
uh, that goes to zero. So you get another 15% saving on those earnings. Now that cap, which was originally 1.7 million um, as of la- uh, last year, sorry, has been increased to 1.9. So you're able to get more money into that pension account in that low tax environment and, um, and be able to draw an income off that. Now, um, now with this, obviously, you do have to draw minimum income amounts. So I guess for some people who don't necessarily want to draw an income and want that money built, unfortunately, um, the government doesn't necessarily want you to keep that money there. They, they're giving you that tax, that um, I guess a low tax or tax-free environment um, in order for your retirement savings to grow and, um, and build up for you, but you also need to be able to draw that income. So fortunately, they're not going to just let you leave it in there, but that's completely fine because, of course, what's, what's the point of having um, superannuation and pension money if we can't use that to um, support our retirement? Now, off the back of that, so I did mention, so number three, the point I wanted to talk to is the minimum withdrawal amounts from pension has increased as well. So everyone sort of, I'm guessing all our listeners, remember the effects of COVID, how our life sort of changed in an, in an instant and um, market prices dropped sharply. We couldn't leave our homes. Uh, we had to wear masks everywhere. And we were in a world of, of unknown, and a lot of a lot of fear was sent through. I guess a world which ended up, and then the fear disappeared. Which um, I think everyone's feelings started to change to annoyance when we couldn't do the things that we wanted to do, and people weren't um, doing what they're supposed to. It was just a, it was a crazy, crazy time. But one of the good things that um, that happened was for. Um, for those drawing money out of their pension accounts, the Australian government actually halved the the minimum amounts that we had to draw from from these accounts. So, uh, w- which was good because it, it allowed people to keep that keep their money a lot more of their money inside that low to no tax um, that no tax environment, and allow that money to continue to grow and give us time. Give us time, <coughs> excuse me. Give us time to let the prices, the market prices, bounce back up. Let people sort of adjust and save their money. So this um, this reduction happened, I think, in March 2020. Now, again, this it was a good it was a good idea there. It allowed allowed people to keep that money in that that uh, no tax environment and uh, allow that money to rebuild. So. Uh, since March 2020, up until 1st of July of this year, 2023, those pension amounts were essentially halved. So people that were 65 to 74, instead of having to draw down 5% of your account balance um, as pension payments, they were able to draw just 2.5% and keep all of that money inside there. Now, of, of course, that couldn't last forever. Um, and things have recovered well. And life's sort of back to normal. Uh, I guess there's a, a few a few things that have changed since then, um, but uh, everything's sort of back to normal and, and recovered. So from first of July 23, they basically um, ceased that those uh, the minimum pension reduction and and brought that back to um, the normal the normal um, amount. So again, if for people aged 65 to 74, that's Increased or has gone back to reverted to five percent of that account balance rather than that two and a half percent. So uh, that that's a I guess a big thing now. I've got clients um, who yeah who are um, only needing to draw that um, minimum amount. That was that that half amount, and uh, of course they I guess panicked a little bit when they seen that their pension payments um, doubled. But of course. Uh, it's uh, it's part of the rules. That's what that, that's what needs to come out. And um, if everything, I guess, stays fine, they, at the end of the day, um, you can still if if you if you're finding yourself in a position where you're drawing um, more money than you need to, even at those minimums, 
there's other things that you can do with that money, such as um, even investing that outside of superannuation and, um, of course, and then letting that continue to build. So those are the three main things, I guess, that have happened this year so from this financial year, from 1st of July 23. Um, so nothing crazy, um, only a few only a few minor changes, but uh, changes nonetheless. So that's uh, all I've got for this episode. Uh, thanks for listening, guys. Thank you for listening to the Money Over 50 podcast with Money Over 50 Financial Advisors. For more information and resources, visit the Money Over 50 website, mo50.com.au. We look forward to catching up again soon.